Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. Crime of violence is always a shock. It is like the sudden onslaught of a hurricane or a tornado. One moment all is peaceful and quiet, and then suddenly nothing is as it was before. But before every violent moment of nature, there is a period of unusual quiet and peace, the lull before the storm. The very nature of a sudden crime of violence makes the police work difficult. There is no real warning, no way of preventing it. It strikes like the violence of nature. Such a crime occurred on the 18th of September. Highway Patrol. Yes, ma'am? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am, I'll get a car right over there, right away. It's a shooting in Masonville. The wife just called. She heard shots, found her husband dead by the front door. Thanks. Headquarters at 2232. It's the second one like this. Second guy shot down without a lead. Why were they shot and who are they? You think they're both part of the same setup? Well, there's nothing else to think. One of them was the next con. Run this through records, see what you can find out. If it ties in, we got a lead. If we haven't, we got nothing. It's time, Jerry. He'll be here any minute. I know it. <sighs> Honey, don't let him panic you. He talks big, but remember, there's only one thing he can do. And we'll let him do it. After he's told people, we'll find out who our real friends are. I'm a few minutes late, but I had a call to make before I came here. I can save us both a lot of time. I don't have the money. What's the matter all of a sudden? We agreed on the amount you were to pay me each month. It isn't much. I can't afford it. Things have been tough. I didn't make any overtime this month. Look, Singleton, you're an ex-con. Just the three of us know that in this town. And we made a deal. I was to keep my mouth shut, and you were to pay every month on the 18th. We don't have the money. You got a good job, Singleton. Nice neighbors, lots of good friends. All that ought to be worth what you're supposed to pay me every month. I told you I don't make that kind of money. You must have a lot of guys on the hook who won't miss what they pay you. <laughs> the more they've got, the more they pay. None of them are exactly happy to see me. Listen, I'll give it to you straight, Collie. I don't have the money. I'll give you an hour. I'll be back at 8.30. See that you have the money, Singleton. Every penny. You know, this is a one-way street. I don't just blow the whistle on you if you don't pay off. <laughs> Why didn't you tell him, Jerry? Why didn't you tell him that you never intend to pay him again? I don't know. I don't know. I lost my nerve. Look, if I tell him, everybody will find out I'll lose my job. We'll have to move again. And he'll follow us. He'll follow us. Well, tell him when he comes back. We'll tell him together. I'm not afraid, Jerry. Here. Ties it up into a nice, neat package. The dead man was an ex-con. As far as the record show, he's going straight. Yeah, the same as the other one. Anything from ballistics? Well, if they're just one killer for the two men, he's pretty smart. He uses a different gun each time. Yeah, you could always slip up, you know. I wonder what's behind it. Well, we've gone over the records. These two guys never knew each other. As a matter of fact, they never even went to the same prison. And all they seem to have in common is they both have records. Yeah, and both are going straight, too. Could it be a revenge killing for a double cross? No, it's got to be something else. What happened to the family of the first guy? And they just quietly moved away. They were kids. His wife had nothing to say. She didn't know why her husband was killed. A report from the Hudson police here says the wife was frightened. They figured she knew something, but she was afraid to talk. Oh, this doesn't make any sense at all. They just chalked it up as an underworld killing. Can't leave it there unless you know why. Get a bulletin out on these killings. Check the other police agencies. See if they got anything along this line, will you? Go on. Okay. 
This is everything in the front closet. Honey, I got a feeling he's not going to let us just walk out. He's got too good a racket shaking down ex-cons like me. He keeps quiet about their records and they pay. They pay. He waits until you're settled, where you got a good job. No one knows you. No, he can't afford the layoff if I don't come through. He's got to teach me a lesson just to keep the others paying. We'll be out of town before anything can happen. He's due here now. We're not half packed. It'll be ours. Whatever happens, just be careful. I'm going to take that in the kitchen. Now, you stay in here. Let me handle him, okay? Okay, let's have the money, Singleton. There won't be any money. Oh, now, I thought you were a smart con, Singleton. Everything I dug up about you showed you were real smart. Real smart, yeah. So smart, I took a two to ten for armed robbery. I thought you knew what was best for you. Now, you pay, or else. Or else what, Collie? Look, you tell my boss I'm an ex-con. You tell anybody you feel like. You think I can just let you walk out? We're not just walking out. Marge. We're going to the police. We're going to tell them what we've been up against. You know, she's a real nice-looking woman, Singleton. Do you ever figure what could happen to her? Especially if you decide to cross me? Collie, look, what's the point of showing your muscle? You know what I make? You've collected enough from me. Now, why not give me a break? I've got a lot of customers just like you, and not one of them has walked out of me yet. I spend too much time setting up each of you guys. You pay. That's it. Though we don't pay. He's dead, all right. And that's the end of everything. Jerry, it was self-defense. You couldn't help what happened. You think the police are going to believe me? Now look at the record, and I'm an ex-con. How many people gave me a chance to go straight, huh? How many times do we have to move? Oh, Jerry, your leg. Sit down. Let me look at it. I can't. I there isn't time. i got to get out of here. Jerry, please. Let me go. Let me call the police. Don't run. Listen, honey, we can't take the chance. You think the police are going to believe me? No, they'll, they'll execute me for murder. Now, we both know that. They're not going to believe me. They won't believe you. You're my wife. If you're going, I'm going with you. I won't let you go alone. I want you to stay. Please. There's a little money in the bank. As soon as it's safe, I'll get in touch with you. Jerry, please, don't run. It can't turn out right. You know it. I've got to do it. But, Jerry, please. Look, if you think the cops will believe you, you call them up. You'll find out. <laughs> Operator, get me the highway patrol. Just a moment, ma'am. Mr. Matthews, it's a woman reporting a killing. She's a little on the hysterical side, but she said her husband shot the man in self-defense. Give me the address. I'll take it. Thanks. Yes, ma'am. We'll have a man over there right away. Yes, ma'am.
Mrs. Singleton, we'll give your husband every break we can, but we're going to have to pick him up and bring him in. Can we use the phone? Yes. Can an APB. Jerry didn't fire the gun. It went off in the struggle. We're going to prove that one way or the other. Operator, give me Highway Patrol headquarters, please. Hi, this is Ken Williams. Get out an APB on Jerry Singleton. 6'2", 170 pounds, brown hair, blue eyes, wearing dark blue work clothes, maroon jacket. Has a gunshot wound in his lower left leg. Was driving a 53 black four-door sedan. License number Frank Young Union 514. Get out the roadblocks. And we need ballistics and coroner. How long was this guy blackmailing you? Almost a year. Well, why didn't you come to the police? Do you know how hard it is for a man who served time? Do you know the way people treat us when they found out? Look, I know it's rough on a guy who serves time, and I know the people just won't give him a break. We felt we'd rather pay, since no one here knew about Jerry. Quite a list of names. If he was running a shakedown racket, this could be a list of clients. Jerry's wounded in the leg. He'll need medical attention. Why didn't you think of that before he ran? He thought he'd be railroaded for murder. I know why he's afraid, and I know why he ran. If he could only get a break. This time, he's innocent. That man was shot during the fight for the gun. Jerry never even had his hand on the gun. He's got a gun now. Yes, sir? I need some bandages, some adhesive tape, and some sulfur powder, please. Oh, you'll need a prescription for the sulfur powder. Well, what can you give me that doesn't take a prescription? Oh, you need a prescription for any of the antibiotics. Do you mind telling me what you need it for? Look, just give me a good antiseptic then, huh? And the other stuff, please. Hey, that's a bad wound. Looks like I... Look, we won't need a prescription. Just get the stuff, will you, please? You make it fast? Wounded, afraid of society and the police, Jerry was running away, a gun in his hand. Now it was up to Matthews to stop him before he used that gun. I'm sorry I had to use this on you. I didn't intend to, but I had to have it for the leg. That's okay, mister. I'll give you what you want. Bandages, adhesive. I'm putting in some gauze pairs. You, you put them on the wound after you sprinkle it with the sulfur. I know. Powder. Help stop the bleeding. You know, a pharmacist is a lot like a doctor. We help anybody who needs help. Me, why, I've gotten up at 3 o'clock in the morning, come down here to open the store just because somebody needed medicine. Glad to do it. Like helping you. Glad to do it. No questions. Uh, uh, you're three, just another human being to me. There's $3 there. Will that be all right? Oh, you don't need to pay me. You're in trouble. Here, take the stuff and take back the money. Keep the money. It's yours. I'm in enough trouble as it is. Now, stay put, huh? Till I get outside? Operator, highway patrol, fast. Highway patrol, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Kreider. I'll send a man over to investigate immediately. All right, let's tighten up this circle. Have the roadblock cars move in a couple of miles. I think this ties in with the Singleton escape. A druggist in Burton reports a wounded man demanded bandages, adhesive, and sulfur at gunpoint. Description. It fits Singleton. I'll get a car out to Burton right away. Okay. Burton's right here. This report checks out. He's still inside the roadblock. Yeah. Headquarters to 2632. Headquarters to 2632.
Here's the medical examiner's report on Coley. Mrs. Singleton told us the truth. The angle of bullet entered the body, condition of the clothes and the powder burns indicate Coley was killed by his own gun during the struggle. Well, from this report, Singleton was a sap to run. Even worse, to take that gun with him. You know, I'm glad he gave the druggist that money. Of course, he's still got the gun. He had a bad leg, and that's a break. How long do you think he can keep going? I don't know. We don't know how bad that leg is. I wish there was someone who could tell him what we know. Well, he's in that circle. One of our men will spot him. Come on, I want to tighten up those roadblocks. Have the roadblocks moved within two miles of Burton. Yes, sir. He's not going to get far with that game leg. Give me two more units. I want him to cover every road in and out of Burton. I can pull in three units. It'll take three to four minutes to move them in on a search pattern. I don't get it. We should have spotted him by now. He must have stopped and pulled off the road somewhere. Could be holed up someplace. Well, the way you move that roadblock in around Burton, there's not much room for him to slip by. Ken, if you were Singleton, where would you go? Well, I think I'd head for the Rocky Hills up here to the north. That's pretty rugged country. No houses, no farms, just occasionally used for hunting. Hills, you might be right. Come on, let's get out there. Headquarters to 2150. Headquarters to 2150. 2150 by. 2342 just spotted Singleton's car. It's uphill road south of the intersections of highways 14 and 22, about two miles from the intersection. Tell 2342 to hold this position. We're heading there now. 10-4? 10-4. Headquarters to 2342. Headquarters to 2342. Hold position. 10-4? 10-4. Twenty-one fifty to headquarters. Headquarters by. Have a car pick up Mrs. Singleton. If Singleton's hold up on those rocks, we might need her help to get him out. Ten four. Ten four. Looks like he lost a lot of blood. He sure did. Hey. 
Could be his tracks right here. Heading up the slope. Looks like he fell down, too. He must be in pretty bad shape. Let's see if we can spot him around here. But let's keep undercover. You think he'll use that gun? He figures he's going to the gas chamber, so what do you think? Does that answer your question? Yeah. He must be in that cluster of rocks right up there. Let's get back to the car. Mr. Singleton ought to be here by now. Find Jerry. Hey, he's up there in those rocks. Benny, he's all right. Hey, he's all right, but he's a pretty bad shot. Please, he didn't kill that man. Give him a chance. The only thing I'm worried about is the chance he's going to give me and my men. Marge. Singleton, come on out of there. Your wife's down here. I checked with the medical examiner. Coley's death was an accident. Sure. Talk me down into a cell and execute me. Throw down your gun! I'm going up. When I'm halfway there, you start talking here. Talk to him, reason with him. If he listens, he'll come down alive. If he doesn't... Is it true what you said about the medical examiner? Yeah, it's true. Tell him that, will you? Jerry, this is Marge. Please throw the gun away, Jerry. Don't fight them. They told the truth. They won't accuse you of murder. They can prove you didn't kill that man. Keep talking, kid. Keep talking. They don't want to kill you, Jerry. They want to help you. They know about your leg, and they'll help you down. Throw away your gun, Jerry, please. Jerry, please, for me. Don't force them to kill you. If you keep firing, they'll have to fire back. Jerry, let me know that you hear, that you understand. If you do, fire two shots in the air and drop your gun. All right, Singleton. Let's have your answer. Keep talking, Mr. Singleton. Jerry, please, fire two shots in the air and drop your gun. Everything's all right now. Call up the roadblocks. Tell headquarters to send an ambulance. Pick up that gun, will you, Ken? He's going to be all right. He just lost a lot of blood. We were wrong, Jerry. We were wrong about the police. I wish you'd tell that to a few million other people. See Highway Patrol again next week. Until then, remember, it isn't what you drive, but how you drive that counts. This is Roderick Crawford saying, see you next week. <laughs>